Welcome back to the Enchanted Basin. If you're new here, hi, I'm Jenny. It is very nice to meet you. I like to do videos that are Halloween or wishy oriented, cat lady box unboxings, vegan taste tests, craft with me's, and chronic illness awareness chats. Shout out to all my fellow spoonies. If any of that interests you, please do consider subscribing to the channel. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers and I would greatly appreciate the support. Also, don't forget to hit the bell so you are notified every single time I put out a new video, which is every Monday and Thursday. Also, give me a big thumbs up. I would also appreciate that. So for today's video, is gonna be another spoony confessional video. I'm sorry I haven't done these in so long. I've been a little bit preoccupied going crazy over Halloween stuff, but I felt the time um, to do one of these because um, about a month ago, my husband and I were on um, a little trip and we listened to a podcast in the car and it was by Cheryl Crow. Um, no, not that Cheryl Crow. <laughs> This Cheryl Crow. She is an occupational therapist. She's also um, a fellow rheumatoid arthritis patient, and she's done so much for chronic illness awareness, especially regarding rheumatoid arthritis, and um, does a podcast, which is amazing, brings on different patients or professionals, and gets their thoughts on different topics. And I absolutely love her stuff. So I will link um, the page for the podcast down below and you'll hit the one that's called eight things everyone who loves someone with arthritis should know. And it goes over um, eight different um, things everyone <laughs> who loves someone with arthritis should know. But I'm also gonna relate it to not only um, arthritis patients and their loved ones, but also just chronic illness in general. Um, Cause for me, a lot of this really applies to my congenital heart defect as well. I think it's gonna be really great if you're a chronic illness warrior, maybe, you know, sit down and listen to the podcast with your family members. I know for me, after listening to that with my husband, there's been so many times since then, he's like, I wish so many people would listen to this because us, we've been married 11 years, together 14. And even now he's like, I've learned so much from that. There was things that I, I just really didn't think about. So like when I say I'm tired, he really understands. It's not just, oh, I'm tired. Like it's okay, we need to have a rest day. We're not doing anything today. So I think it's made a huge difference in our relationship. So I think if you're also in that boat, um, definitely doesn't hurt to like send this to your friends or family, have them take a listen. Maybe they'll kind of understand where you're coming from as a patient. Let me stop blabbering and let's just go ahead and get right into it. So number one, I'm gonna read these off my little, my little notepad. <laughs> number one, we want you to learn what the disease is and isn't. Amen. Um, I will say, I will give you both my perspectives on all of these from both um, heart disease as well as my rheumatoid arthritis. From a heart disease perspective, oh my gosh, how many times people are like, oh my gosh, you're so young for heart disease. And it's like, well, I was actually born with congenital heart defects, which is still, you know, a disease. I've had a lot of surgeries, I've had different things. And so when people, that lack of awareness, a lack of education um, can be really damaging to relationships. So I think, you know, just take the time to, you know, maybe do a little bit of research. If you're a loved one of someone with one of these conditions, you know, take the time, maybe like a 10 minute Google search. I'm sure you can learn so much even from that. From a RA perspective, um, when it comes to like, you know, rheumatic autoimmune conditions or just other autoimmune conditions, people hear arthritis, they automatically think, old people or it's just your joints or they don't really get the full picture of what all it encompasses and it's so more so much more than just achy joints or that kind of thing there's it's completely systemic condition so it affects other organs uh, it affects energy levels and it affects so so much so um, I think you know raising more awareness and better education on a loved one's part really can uh, can be a benefit to a relationship, if that makes sense. So definitely take the time, you do a little bit of research, I think it would really make you understand where we as patients come from a little bit better and make you, I guess, better at communicating. So I've had so many people say like, oh, get better soon. I'm like, okay, yes, but also both of these are lifelong conditions. They are not going away. There's no cure for them. So you educating yourself on it would 
be a little bit better and I would appreciate it. <laughs> Number two, the fatigue can be just as bad as the pain. Yes. I will say for me, like I was only diagnosed with RA a year ago, but I've had these issues for like close to 10 years. Like the amount of doctors that have tested me for rheumatoid arthritis in the past 10 years is insane. Like every single one of them have, because I've told them all the pains I have. I finally had a doctor last year that understood and figured out, and even though my blood work was coming back negative, everything else, including x-rays, came back positive. And I've just never, ha never had a doctor do enough investigation to figure it out. So anyway, I finally got diagnosed and I'm pretty much now on a, a medication regimen that works. And so my joints don't hurt as much, but the fatigue can be absolutely terrible. And from the outside, it can absolutely look like someone's just being lazy or just sleeping all the time or whatever. Like I'm sure when people see me sometimes they're like, what do you do with your day? And I'm just like, I'm just trying to make it through. <laughs> you know, like if you're so exhausted, you can barely get up and do anything. And that can be really hard from a mental health standpoint. Like, you know, people thinking you're lazy and you, I know I struggle with, Sometimes being like, I'm, I'm not doing anything, I should be doing stuff, but also like realizing I can't do anything. Like I physically don't have the energy for it. So if a loved one can maybe understand that it's not just, oh, I'm just tired, I just don't wanna do anything or blah, blah, blah. It's, it's serious. When fatigue hits you, it is hard. Imagine like, you know, someone without a chronic illness condition staying up two or three days straight with no sleep and how absolutely drained and tired you are. Like you cannot possibly do anything. That's what it's like. Just understand that if we're not in pain, there may also be fatigue or something else that's bothering us or causing an issue. Number three, it doesn't just affect the body, it also affects the mind and emotions. This all kind of plays in. So like there's times when maybe if my joints are good, maybe fatigue isn't you know too bad, but mentally I'm not in a great place. I've also been dealing with this over the last year and a half or so because there's, you know, medication after medication after doctor's appointment after medication, things don't work. It can be an absolute drain on your emotions. Also seeing, you know, people doing great and you're sitting here not, that's really hard as a patient to feel like, you know, you can't do what everyone else can do. And we just have to remember that it takes a, it's a big emotional toll on us to do what we do <laughs> um, and to deal with everything we do. So just being mindful that, you know, if I know sometimes I accidentally lash out at my husband and he's gotten really good about realizing it's not, you know, it's not him I'm mad at, it's I'm just so tired or in so much pain that it affects how I communicate. <laughs> so I've tried to get better about that or really let him know like, hey, it's not a good day. I'm sorry if I yell at you, just preemptively saying things. So just be aware that if your loved one is maybe not acting how they normally do or that kind of thing, it could very well be the illness. I know there's been times where I have a really good day and my husband will hug me and he'll say like, I miss this Jenny. And that emotionally is really hard for me. Like I'm, I'm happy to be that Jenny, but also like, I miss that Jenny sometimes. You know, I don't always have the energy I always used to. I don't want to do everything like I did, you know, um, or I want to, but I am not, I don't have the, I'm not there to do it. My physical and mental body, it's not there like it was. So I think just being aware that there's a whole lot of components that go into these kind of health conditions and just communicating with your loved ones so that you're all on the same page and you can, you know, help each other the best you can. Next aspect would be number four, it affects each person differently. This is incredibly important to remember both as a patient and as a loved one. Um, as a patient, it is the worst thing you can do to compare yourself to others. I know I'm incredibly guilty of it. I know we all are probably. And you see a friend doing it and you're like, well, how come they can do it and I can't? Especially for me when it comes from a cardiac perspective, because I have so many friends that are out there like, running 5Ks and I'm like, I can barely walk for 30 minutes <laughs> without dying. We just have to know we're all in a different place. Um, we're all in a different place in the actual condition as well. So like as a loved one, I know I've definitely had people coming from a good place, meaning well, but they'll be like, oh, you know, I had the coworker who 
had this kind of thing and they're doing great so maybe you should blah 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 and it's like okay I appreciate the thought but also maybe the co-worker was in a different stage of the condition um, you know mine may be far more progressed than theirs or vice versa and so we just have to be mindful that while those tips and kind of things are helpful everyone's at a different stage everyone's body is completely different I know for me from an RA perspective it's been very difficult because I also do have my heart condition so there's medications that would be great for me with RA that cardiac has said I can't take because it's not safe and so there's it's been very um, tricky kind of trying to coordinate all of that so just know that every single person is different just because you have another friend that may have the same condition doesn't mean your other friend is going to be able to do exactly what they are so just be mindful of that I think the whole sorry my throat is really dry <laughs> I think the whole name of the game for all of this is mindfulness and communication. So hopefully that helps you kind of understand that just because one person has it and the other person has it doesn't mean they're going to be exact same in, in what they can do and how it's treated. Number five, daily symptoms are often unpredictable. Yes. <laughs> with this, uh, the biggest thing I found to be helpful with friends is also to say, you know, here's, can we just pencil this in? Like I know everyone loves to be like okay we're gonna do this this day and this is great but for me like I struggle to commit to things now because I don't know how I'm gonna feel on that day you know so it's like I'll even let them know like hey I can pencil you in I'm hopefully I'll be able to make it that day but just in case maybe can we set out another tentative day to reschedule or that kind of thing just so they're aware and I think that's been really hard um, but you just have to have people that are really in your corner and really understanding so as like a a loved one just know like <laughs> sometimes things are gonna have to change you know your partner or friend or girlfriend boyfriend whomever might wake up and not feel good that day so even though you have something planned you may not be able to do it and you have to be okay with that because they can't control it you know we we would love to wake up feeling amazing and being able to do everything we plan to do but that doesn't always happen our conditions and our bodies are completely unpredictable to this so just be flexible you know maybe if you were gonna go do something out of the house maybe instead say hey well how about we just stay in and we'll watch a movie so that way you can still hang out you can still you know be around each other but it's something that maybe your bodies can handle or also just know maybe you have to reschedule a completely different day I know for me sometimes if I'm not feeling well Last thing I want to do is be around people. I just want to lay on the couch with my cozy blanket and just just take some deep breaths and try to get through it. Um, so I think being flexible and just being understanding that things might have to change, plans might have to kind of rotate. Then you guys can get through it. Again, communication. Just be open and honest with each other and kind of, you'll get through it together. <laughs> Number six, we want credit for how hard we're fighting even when we seem normal normal oh, yes i think this is hard for me because i don't necessarily love praise it makes me kind of uncomfortable sometimes but at the same time like it would be nice to be recognized for you know pushing when i did that like you know even it's like i when we went and did groceries one day it's like Sometimes you have to realize that takes a toll on us, you know, so different little things. Um, it would just be nice to say like, oh, you did good today or thanks for your help or I appreciate all that, you know, just little things like that. You don't have to like throw a party and say like, good job for groceries. <laughs> you know, just, just be, you know, appreciative. And I think little things like that or say like, oh, you know, I'm glad we did that. How about we celebrate with a nice dinner tonight? Or how would I cook dinner? Cause I appreciate what you did today or, that kind of thing so I think just recognizing that even if we seem like we're doing a hundred percent okay there could still be something going on the amount of times that I mask and push through things and put on a happy face even when I'm not a hundred percent is a lot I've gotten better about listening to my body but I know not everybody does and I know even sometimes I still don't because I want to go and do things with my friends or family I think just realizing they were human and just being grateful and I think showing maybe not like praise but like just saying good job today I appreciate what you did or uh, I'm glad we were able to do that or good for you or you know like but be not condescending about it you know that's the last thing we want like 
Oh, good job, you did groceries. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. Say thank you, I appreciate it. Just be genuine. That's gonna go a long way. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, my throat is so dry today, everyone. Weather is like cooling down here for the day. And so the humidity has gone away and now my throat doesn't know how to handle the lack of moisture in the air. <laughs> All right, number seven. Sometimes we need problem solving, other times we need empathy. I know for me, being on the other side of this, uh, I struggle terribly to not problem solve because that's just in my nature. I always want to offer solutions and that kind of thing. But I also realize that's not what people need all the time. I think being um, on the other side of it for your loved one, I think it would be very good to just say like, hey, are you just so I can be the best listener or um, be here for you in the way that you need? Are you um, wanting solutions or ideas or suggestions on how to maybe get through this? Or are you just wanting someone to listen? That way that person can better be there for their loved one, you know, if that makes sense, you know, um, you know, how many more times can I say, you know, <laughs> I think that's the big thing is just sometimes we just need to rant and we need to cry and we need a hug. Other times we're like, Hey, here's something I want to do, but I'm not quite sure if I can make it through or the timing or any of this kind of stuff. Um, and then we're actually looking for solutions. So just be mindful that there's two sides to all of that. Um, and it's very multifaceted. Number eight, managing the disease itself is a job that takes time and energy. Yes, um, this is honestly for me one of the reasons why I'm not working. Um, I stopped working before I got diagnosed, but it's because I was, well, one was because of the virus that shall not be named, but also because my health had gotten to a point where I was really struggling. Even now, having been diagnosed, there's still so much to coordinate, like doctor's appointments, whether it's therapies, um, <laughs> pain management, uh, you know, gastrointestinal, I like so many different doctors I have to go to. Even within cardiac, I have two different doctors. It would be good to remember that it's not just, oh, living with this, with, which in itself is a lot to deal with, but we also have to be like our own little office. We have to have the office manager. We have to have the accountant that does with like all the bills and the insurance. We have to have HR, <laughs> which does deals with coordinating all of our own benefits, which talking to doctors, talking to family members, talking to friends. There's a whole office in our head that's trying to do all of this. That can be a lot and that can drain your energy. Just recognizing that like that can really take a lot of time and be just as much as working. So be mindful of that, especially if they're the person as a patient, you know, they are still working and doing this like kudos, so much kudos. As a loved one, please just be mindful and like, you know, ask if there's anything you can do to help or just be there for them because it's a lot to manage. Okay, and Cheryl listed a, um, a bonus item. I'm actually gonna list a second bonus line because I thought of something as well. So here's her bonus item. Take care of your needs as a caregiver and friend. I think that is super important because often caregivers like we don't want you to be drained, you know, dealing with us, especially if you're someone that's like driving us to appointments or taking us to whatever, or just being there for us all the time. Like I'm sure that has to be a lot. So make sure and take care of yourself as well. Cause that's extremely important. You know, as a patient, we definitely don't want to see your mental health or physical health um, diminish because you're trying to take care of us, you know? So just be good to yourself if you need your own personal time. I know my husband and I are really good about in the evenings. We eat dinner, we watch a show together, and then usually we do a few hours of, you know, personal time each. Like I watch a show and he'll go and play games on the computer or something. So I think it's important to um, give each other personal time, but just take care of yourself. My bonus item is that we as patients don't always know our limits. And so sometimes it can be beneficial if you help us with that, if that makes sense. So not to say like, I need you to like, be like, Jenny, you have to stop right now. I can see you're overheating, but just be like, if you can kind of see that maybe we're struggling, instead of like pointing it out and telling us like, you know, you've gone too far, this is too much, because that's just gonna make us feel bad. Or especially if 
you're like me and you like to push yourself. I'm like, no, 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 I'm fine. I can do this. I can keep going. How about suggest like, hey, let's go do something more relaxed. Be mindful. We don't always know our limits and we're struggling to find them. So if you can kind of see those instead of like maybe pointing it out and making us feel bad, um, just maybe come up with other solutions that you think we could be able to handle as well. I don't know. If, if you're a patient or a caregiver, please comment below on that one. Is that too much? Is that like, I don't want to be rude on either part, you know, like, I don't know. I just kind of thought about that because I feel like I know I struggle to know my limits. I will just keep on pushing, keep on pushing. Sometimes I kind of would love somebody to just be like, hey, how about let's just, uh, let's rest now. <laughs> Instead of saying like, I can see you're struggling and overheating. Let's stop, <laughs> you know. I don't know. That's the thought. I hope you all really enjoyed this. I Again, I will link Cheryl's uh, page down below. Please, please do give her a follow. All of her podcasts are absolutely amazing. She also has a rheumatoid arthritis like roadmap course. So like if you're a patient that's newly diagnosed and trying to figure all of it out, especially if you're new to the chronic illness world, it's, a, it's an incredible course. So definitely check out all of her stuff. But yeah, I really... Hope you guys enjoyed this. Comment below if there's any other like chronic illness awareness, boonie confessional type topics you'd love me to discuss. Please comment below. I would definitely love to hear those. And yeah, I hope everyone is doing wonderful. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.